Last week I got up and I said, how many of you are glad I'm preaching today? And uh, it was, uh, instead of Pastor Weaver, how many of you are glad that Pastor Weaver is preaching today? Oh, <laughs> I, see, I was supposed to let you say that and then it would have been different, right? Well, I mean, you know, they probably aren't that glad, but I'm going to give them and give it to them anyway. You're <laughs> I, I want to tell you, there, Pastor Weaver visiting, has a message. If you're visiting, you come wait, back wait, 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 week. Wait, 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 wait. I, I've got a microphone in my hand, That's and right. I'm standing behind the pulpit. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Go ahead. Make him the, make him gonna, the, make him the senior co-pastor. I was just going to tell, tell you all that uh, he has an incredible message that is a message that we need to hear this morning. Uh, God has a purpose for us as a church. And uh, this message this morning is just what we need. Okay. And so I'm going to let you preach because you could do it way better than me. Thank you. I'll try. Okay. Thank you. Give Pastor Weaver a warm, okay, yeah. warm welcome. Give me welcome. a warm welcome. So much so that we have to tell him to stop. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, shout out to my friends Sean and Ruthie Oberg. Uh, Ruth's father passed away, and they happened to be in town for the funeral. God bless you. They went with us to Israel four years to see. Two, a little over two years ago, I guess it was. And uh, well, they are, they're a joyous people, I'll tell you that. Hey, listen, uh, if you're visiting with us, don't be discouraged when I'm done. There's other preachers that can do better. You come on back another Sunday, okay? And stop out there in, at the visitor center, the welcome desk, which is kind of behind the sound booth in the foyer. It says, welcome visitors or something like that. And you can go there and you can get this little propaganda thing that's there. And my picture's in there, and I had them touch it up so I looked better in the brochure. So you try to forget what I look like here. Look on there. I look really good. And my wife is in there, and uh, too, she's pretty interesting looking. And uh, <laughs> what, I, what I meant to say, she's really hot. And so, <laughs> hot, 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 hot. Okay, so anyway, yeah. So anyway, you can see her. And then... If you're visiting, you can go by that Fresh Start, and we have a gift for you, and uh, we hope you'll register your visit and come back, and if you don't have a church, we'd sure love to have you be a part. One of the things when I started the church to be 27 years this October that I was concerned about, I was concerned about a church getting religious and not keeping it about relationship, having a form of religion and not having the power of God. I was concerned about uh, the church... Uh, I, 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 I had been a part of a church, and it was um, a couple of hundred or so. I don't remember exactly when I went there, and, and uh, it grew, and it grew, and it grew, and, and there was a lot of people there, and, um, and now this church about twice as big as that one was when I left, and, um, and I, I didn't like it. I didn't like all those people. There's too many people. How many of you ever feel like too many people? Huh? Yeah, and so, uh, and the reason is is because I'm so relational, it was frustrating. I couldn't know everybody as close as I wanted to know them. I wanted to be close to everybody. So when I started the church, I was thinking, now, we, we, this, this will be about right. We just get this many people, and then this will be a great little fellowship because I realized the value. My heart was good, but, but I was wrong because I guess I really didn't care about the rest of the people go to hell or not. Just have our little group here and then forget all those people, Right. And I, I, I had an elder like slap me upside the head and go, yeah, well, you, you need to go to a double service because people are visiting. They go in, they look in there, it's too full, and then they leave, and we don't know if they know Jesus or not because that is the main reason that I exist is I want everybody to know Jesus. And, um, and I want everybody to be growing and, and teach everyone and have them be productive in their ministry and effectiveness for the church. So anyway, I, I just, I, I like closeness and relationship. I like to know everyone. It's just kind of my, in my DNA in, in that. And so, so I, the church got big and I, 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 it was a struggle for me. I had to like think this through. And then I realized something that, that uh, it's not wrong to have a lot of people as long as we're connected and you connect every opportunity you have that we be the body of Christ, okay? And so uh, we have membership Sunday. At the close of the service, those of you, your name, your name is in the bulletin that you're taking membership this year, and there were several of them in the early service. I know there's some of you here. Then I'm going to have you come up at the close of the service. But the, but, but, but the thing of it is, is, 
is uh, while there's many people here, somebody t told me, and I think a lot of people have kind of said this, this is the largest small church they've ever been in. I mean, Emmy can relate to that. It's a large, but it's a small church. Why? Because it's relationship. And what did, did, did God say the first and second commandment is? It's to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And the fact that uh, those are relational, your relationship with God, relationship with each, uh, each other. And within the fellowship of believers, this is, a, this is a believers meeting this morning. So this isn't primarily a meeting to bring in people that maybe don't know the name of Jesus. And if you don't, we want you to know him. We have materials at, that, at the Fresh Start Center we can give you from Billy Graham and a Bible, whatever you need. But, but you know, we are here as family. And, you know, this morning I'm not going to probably teach a lot of you anything you haven't heard. But basically I'm going to grab you by the cheeks like you do your children. Like this. And I'm going to say, now listen to me. Listen to me. I want you to be biblical. I want you to be a church family and not have a church service. People can come to a church that has good music and a decent message and ministry programs and so forth, good for their kids, for their youth, and they pick that and they come and they spectate. And that is not what God wants and it's certainly not what I want. I would rather to have fewer people, not that I don't want people that are at that place that they can grow in, but I want to nudge you, if that's where you are, to, to do more than that, to, do, to get connected, to impact people and let them impact you and to support people and together to use the giftings that we have to really truly be a living organism, the church of Jesus Christ by his spirit leading us each one and impacting and connecting and making a difference in the lives, each other's lives, so that we're healthy. And there's several verses in the Bible that talks about that. The, you know, God is our father. That makes us family, right? Because we talk about brothers and sisters in Christ. We are family. We got a good father, but we're not all perfect, are we? He's the perfect one. And so as a family, you're still related. And so what do you do? You forgive each other. You're merciful to each other. You don't, you, you know, uh, uh, you be kind to each other. And, and people don't need to be beat up. Listen, the world's tough out there. And this needs to be a safe place, a place of love, a place that when someone's wounded or they make a mistake, they embarrass themselves, they do something stupid, that people don't talk about it. They love them, they pray for them, and they forgive them. You know, because a church... The number one thing Paul talks about in every one of his books is the unity of the faith and loving each other and preferring each other and praying for each other, encouraging each other, comforting one another, all of these things. And so it's not about whether you, uh, you know, like every song. It's not whether you like the personality of the preacher. I mean, this, this church service here is, is, is not near as important as many, many things going on everywhere to be the family of God. We have a father and we're his children and we need to be connected. And around you, I've, I've seen this happen in church before here. I've looked out and I went, I don't know that couple. Oh my goodness, they're sitting by somebody I don't know. Oh, the other side, there's a couple I don't know. Look right behind them, there's another couple I don't know. And in front of them, there's only one family within a seven family radius that goes here. And you know what happens? Those visitors go out and go, boy, that's the most unfriendly church. Nobody spoke to me. And I want to go, that's because they were all visitors sitting around you. They were waiting for you to speak to them. They thought you were the member. Oh, well, there was one person that went to the church there, but they're shy. They're afraid. I don't know who you are. <laughs> no. Do you know there's wonderful people sitting around you? Did you know there's people with cancer in their body? sitting around you, perhaps. People that are struggling in a marriage, struggling financially, have wayward children or grandchildren, struggling, hurting people. I mean, we all hurt, don't we? Do you know that there are people that get down? They're very down. Last Sunday, I was very down. The week before that, I'd just been to my mother. We put her in a nursing home. We lined up to sell her house. 
an estate sale, went and prepared, pre-arranged her funeral and all those things because she kept falling. Same thing is happening right now to Con Givens. Keeps falling. He's not strong enough. He needs more care than an individual that can do without being in a place where they have paid people all the time. I, I, was, I was really down. I didn't want to be here. Okay, but I needed to be here. But I didn't want to be here. And my wife says, you got to go. You're the pastor and they pay you to go. I say, okay. <laughs> I'll go. But here's the thing, you know, I get connected to people that aren't even in this church because that's what really Christians do. They love people. So like there's a teacher sitting back here that taught my kids that I love the pieces. I always thought the high, highly of her because you know what? She doesn't just do a job. She loves the, loves the children. She impacts the children. She always has. She impacted my children. And uh, many of you, you have people that aren't just part of a church, but you're connected in relationships and those matter. That's what makes life worth it, you know, whether you're at the workplace or wherever. But especially in a church, let's not reduce this to a sermon and a song. We need each other. You're needed and you need each other. It's very important. So membership today, we come to take membership. And let me just say this, membership doesn't make you a Christian. And some of you may not be card-carrying members, but you're much connected and members of Christ and his body and his church, and you are more involved in interacting and connected even though you haven't taken the paper thing out yet. And others have taken the paper thing out but you're not very connected, you're not very involved, you're not very engaged, and you seem to not really care about everyone, and we need you. We need your giftings. We need your service. We need your heart. We need your love and your support and your prayers, all of it. So while membership uh, in a local body has nothing to do with your eternal salvation and your walk with God and relationship with God, it is vital, though, because local congregations that organize and work together and, and plan and commune and encourage, it keeps people spiritually healthy and directed and focused so that we can make an impact. And here's the thing. You know, if I could get you to, to, to listen in a different way to Kennedy, you could say, don't ask what the church can do for me, but what can I do for the church? In other words, quit looking at what someone, how they reach you or how they touch you or what they do to you. Begin to look out and see what you can do for them. In other words, you're gonna get your feelings hurt if you're acknowledging or paying attention to how someone else is interacting or reaching out to you. Forget it. You be the first one to speak. You be the first one to reach out. You be the first one to say, come over. Jesus said this, he said, if you have someone to your house for a meal because they have you back for a meal, what have you done any different than heathen? It's the person that understands hospitality and continues to reach out and help people and love people and give to people and care about people, even if they don't give anything back. No, you don't do it for that reason, right? So guys, I'm just having a little family talk this morning about not wanting to be a church service and a song. If the songs stink one week, so what? If this sermon stinks, come back next week. Dr. Gordon Anderson from North Central, who's a phenomenal speaker, is gonna be speaking. He'll be good, come back. But what makes church good is how you interact. First Corinthians chapter 12, let's start there. Take your Bibles or your devices, your electronic device, or watch on the screen. First Corinthians 12 verse 12, talks about the body of Christ. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. We are, for we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we are all given the one spirit to drink, even so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Notice Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. It's not limiting it to that. It's saying... And that day, that's the, the, the dividing lines of differences. And I'm going to tell you, that doesn't matter what nationality, ethnicity, social status, uh, uh, gender, age, education, background. It doesn't matter, guys. Every person matters to God and should matter to you. And every person is important before God. And together, we make up the body of Christ 
and God made it that way. The foot, she said in verse 15, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? I mean, aren't you glad not everybody is like me? That was supposed to be extremely humorous. I was waiting for like a boisterous laughter. See, I see myself and I've tried to get a job on late night TV, but they reject me every time. I see myself as a comedian, a commodian a life of the potty, right? That's what you think I am. So, that's as old as it gets, come on. Verse 18. So, well, let's see, go to 17. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? Verse 18, but in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. And that's the way it is, he's saying an analogy in the church. You're all one, and Paul says, defend the unity of the faith, be one. You're all have the same Holy Spirit that has presented Christ and regenerated you and came into your life to save you, to convict you, to show you the truth. We all have the same, but yet we're all different, very different, as different as the eye is from an ear. That's what he's saying. So verse 21 says, the eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and the parts that think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body. No division, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other equal concern for each other. Every person matters. You see, I don't, I, don't, we don't, I don't let people count here anymore. We don't count because I don't care how many, I care who. I see you, I see you, right? And I also see the people that aren't here and I care about them because they matter too. Some of them have reasons. They're working or they had to be out of town or they're like... Uh, like Phil and Lynn Parker, Lynn's, Lynn's sister died, and they left today because of the storms that are going to the funeral. It matters. So it says in verse 25, so there should, not be no, there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. 26, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. He's talking about a physical body, an analogy, and that we care each other so much that when you weep, we weep with you. When you rejoice, we rejoice with you. When your children struggle, we, we care, we love. We don't go, well, if you, you know, you don't think, well, if you'd have raised them right like I did, your kids wouldn't, baloney. I've seen people raise their kids great and two of them serve God with all their heart and two of them just turn out to be stinkers. That's because they have a chance and they have the same devil after them and lying to them, trying to steal their faith and destroy them. Verse 27, you're the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. Each one of you are a part of the body of Christ. The most important thing there is in the world is the church of Jesus Christ. He established it. He planted it. He gave the gifts. He put you in it. It's by the same spirit that dwells in you. And every one of you matter. And when you're missing, there's a link missing to the chain. You are needed. You are missed. We're not as strong without you. We need you. It's not just coming because you go, I think I need church today. No. I don't care if you don't need it, you don't get anything out of it. You come here to minister to people, to connect to people, to bond with people, to build bridges, to love, to encourage, to pray for. It's the body of Christ. In Ephesians chapter four, uh, the Bible talks about, and I'm gonna start a little different place than I did in the other service. Uh, uh, it says in verse nine, well, no, let's skip over that, let's see. Verse 11, this is talking about Jesus. It was Christ who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors. 
so that the body of Christ may be built up. In other words, he established the church. He died for it. He established and he gave people to lead and giftings to be leaders. To, he gave pastors and teachers and prophets and evangelists. See, he gave these people. And he says, why? So that the body of Christ may be built up. And, and, and also the, the King James says it this way, uh, starting in verse 11, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You have a work to do in the ministry. And it is work. It is work. We're not just called to enjoy life and go to concerts and, and, and entertainments and games and, 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 and frolic in the sun and on the lake and everything else. There's, those things are not wrong. It's not sin. It's not about that. It's about preferences, and you need those times. You need recreation. I understand that. Your children need to be a part of activity and, 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 and things like that, but it can't get upside down and become more important. Listen, I'm telling you right now, this body of Christ, we need workers. The Bible, Jesus said, work while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. And the ministry and being a part of the body involves work. You know, that's casserole for these families to support them and encourage them and build a bridge. You take them a meal or something. That doesn't just happen. That takes work. And it also costs, right? The people in the nursery right now, trust me, I did it Easter Sunday night. They're working. In fact, I know that hair is falling out of old men's head, heads if they're in there working in that preschool nursery. I know that. I had to sweep mine up. It was in a pile. <laughs> Why? To prepare God's people for works of service, it says in verse 12 in the NIV, so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach the unity of the faith, the knowledge of the Son of God, and become mature. In other words, spiritually strong, mature, so that we're not tossed to and fro with every wind of doctrine and every trouble that comes and going, where is God? No, we can be strong like Job of old, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. There it goes, verse 14. Then we'll no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the ways, blown, blown here and there by every wind of teaching, by the cunning and craftiness of men and their deceitful scheming, instead speaking the truth in love, you can't speak the truth in love unless you have a relationship. And you can't have a relationship if all you do is watch life on a tube. Turn it off. Have people over. Get to know them. Get to know someone besides your own family. Have your family invite another family. Get to know them. Not just your children, not just your grandchildren, not just your inner circle of your family. Your family needs to be taught to reach beyond your family to help other families and reach other people and care for them. Family bonding is important, but we need to be the church as well. You can't speak truth in love unless they know your heart. They'll listen. I, many of you have spoke the truth in love to me, and it's pierced my heart, but it was good. The proverb writer said this. It says, the wounds of a faithful friend can be trusted. We will in all things grow up into him is the head that is Christ. We grow up from the whole body. There it is again. Join and held together by every supporting ligament. Hello, ligaments. <laughs> that was for those that are proud. I call them a ligament. That'll put them down. Grows and builds itself up in love. Each part does its work. Hey, we got a work to be done. Well, simple outline, it won't take long. Don't get a little rattled because I'm about to just start this outline, okay? We're gonna spell out membership, me, me, M-E. It's not about me and it's not about you. It's not about me, I'm the pastor. It's not about the other pastors. It's not about me. It's not about you, but it's up to you and it's up to me. Someone once said, pray as if it totally is up to God and you have nothing to do with it. But work as if it's totally up to you and God has nothing to do with it. You work hard because God is in partnership with us and let the Holy Spirit be powerful through you. You got to put your hand to the plow. You got to get with the program. You got to see there's something you can do. Always is. Something you can do. It's not, up, it's not about me. It's not about you. But it's up to me. It's my responsibility, it's your responsibility. What if everybody did what you did in the church? What would the church be? Right? What if everybody prayed like you prayed, gave like you gave, served the way you served, sacrificed the way you sacrificed, used their talent the way you use your talent? What if everyone did this? What would the church be? I hope your answer would be, would be fantastic. There's me, there's M for ministry. 
And in the text I read in 1 Corinthians 12, in the middle of that, it talks about ministry. It talks about us all being different. But it says in verse 18, I'm going to skip to that. In fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. You're no accident. He's gifted you. He's made you with the personality. You're no accident. He's put you just as he wants them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? It's totally what he's saying there is that you have a ministry, not only a ministry, but to serve. I, w- I was over at the student campus, I think it was a Saturday a week ago, and there's Gary Garten recovering for surgery. He told me, he said, the last three weeks I've gotten stronger, my appetite's back, I can taste food, God is really doing something. He's on his knees, on the concrete, reaching up around this ugly big green bush that's got out of control, and he's getting there and getting your grandkids and your kids' gum out from underneath there, picking up that gunky stuff and old paper wrappers and cleaning out the leaves. He's cleaning up that yard. Is he getting paid? No, he's being a part of the body of Christ. He's offering his gift. And he's not just doing it, he's doing it with all of his heart. And uh, about 60, 70 people clean both of these buildings, every inch of it. And when they clean, they pray for the church. They clean and they pray. Pray over different ones. People in the nursery right now. I saw Denny Ross out here in the yard. It was raining. It was springing like it was yesterday. And he had... I don't know what he had done, but he was out there in the rain and he had a rake. He raked that whole yard. You don't think that yard doesn't look like that because someone just threw a little chemical on it. Somebody's busting their old hands <laughs> on it. You know what I'm saying? There's work, guys. It's work. And you enjoy it. You enjoy those flowers, don't you? How many enjoy coming up here and seeing it? Why? Because it says, we care about what God cares about and his church matters. And while it's only a physical building and it's only the properties, it does speak what we think about it. You have a ministry, not only a ministry of your giftings, whether you sing, you ought to be up here singing. Don't sit on your voice. This choir ought to be full. If you're sitting there and you're just saying, oh, I'm too old now. Oh, I'm too busy now. No, you're not. 6.30 to 8 Wednesday night. Get in the choir right? Then the next one is bonding. See this bulletin? Somebody came up with the weirdest idea. I'm going to get me a mask made with my hair like I looked when I was 18 and go to this thing. They're going to have a prom for the oldie goldies. Absolutely. The table's out there. You can get all signed up. It's going to be fun. I don't know who had the idea. I don't, they're not dancing, but they're dressing up and they're eating and they're carrying on like young, young people, like, because some people are in denial that they're actually old. But Anyway, get your ticket. Because why? Because you have an opportunity to come. What's the point? Opportunity to interact, to laugh together, to share life together, to connect to someone you don't know. But you know what some of you do? You go and you sit at the table, and I can tell you who's going to be at the table. I can tell you who's going to be at your table. The same people that are at your table every time you show up, and you don't know the person over there. You know, in the early service, Jim James is here. You didn't know he's got three to six months to live because he's got cancer, but he says he's not receiving that report. He's believing God to heal him. He's going to live a lot longer than that. And I'm going to agree with him. But see, how do you know him unless you get in a place like, like the old retired people Tuesday morning breakfast? How about, you know, the women's ministry? They were putting on these breakfasts and people liked it so much they were connecting. Someone said, hey, can we do one? So somebody else is doing a breakfast even though we thought they were done. So you got another opportunity. I don't know if the food will be any good or not. If I cook it, it won't. But you might as well go because it's not about the food. It's about the connecting. And you can go down through here and look at all the different things going on. You can connect. There's all kinds of ways to connect because we want to bond. It's not about just showing up. Verse 23 and 24 it talks about bonding in here. It says, and the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable, we treat it with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it. We have to understand that you're never by nature going to connect with people that you don't have something common in. I had this idea. There's as many ideas of ministries as there is your giftings and your ideas. Listen, I had this idea. What if a young couple, like right here, what if you were to find a grandparent couple that their kids don't live here and they're alone or maybe they don't have, never had children and you adopt them as grandparents and you checked on them and you had them over for holidays so an old couple's not sitting in their house by themselves on Thanksgiving. 
What if? See? But is that the church to do? Well, who's the church? Me? No, not me. It's not about me. But there's all kinds of things that can be done, guys, to be the body of Christ. And then verse 25 talks about encouraging. And, so, you know, we need to encourage each other so that there's no division in the body, but that it's parts of equal concern for each other. E for encouragement. And reach, R for reaching the lost. You see, Romans 12, 3 and 8 mentions gifts, but it's not a complete list. It says this, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you. Did it say some of you? It say every one of you, doesn't it? Do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to, you ligaments. <clears throat> but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Sober judgment. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not have all the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have differing gifts according to the grace that God has given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy in accordance with your faith. If it's serving, then serve. If it's teaching, then teach. If it's encouraging, then encourage. Give encouragement. If it's giving, then give generously. If it's to lead, do it diligently. If it's to show mercy, do it cheerfully. And he just stops there and he, the, the scripture goes on, but let me tell you what he's saying. He's not giving you a complete list of what you can do. There's a whole lot more things. If you drive bus, drive it for God. Somebody's drove the bus up there for the, the junior hires that are having their retreat this weekend. Whole bunch of kids up there. You get some driver like me and they don't get back home safe and you have a big funeral, right? But somebody's gifted to be able to drive. That was not meant to be funny. That's dead serious right there. Dan Betzer said I about killed him three times and he was serious, I almost did. And then reach the loss, S for stewardship, listen. Why, oh, let me go back to reaching the lost. Listen, all these giftings are for one purpose, to build us up so that we're strong, so that we can do the big work for God, and that's win the lost, share the gospel, have healthy classes, have healthy ministry, have social ministries, caring ministries, that everybody has a part. You do your part, you'd be surprised how much greater the kingdom of God will grow just by doing your little piece together. We're great if you'll just do your little piece with all your heart. And then S for stewardship. And I know it's Old Testament, but it has the principle and God doesn't change. And it should be by the Spirit because God doesn't require just a minimum of the law. He requires your heart to be givers. But as members of the body of Christ, we need to understand, if you, like Jesus said, look, he said, where your heart is, your treasure is. Where your treasure is, your heart will be. It's the same thing. The heart and treasure will always be in the same place. In Malachi chapter three, verse six, I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees. You've not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me, God says. But you ask, well, how are we robbing you, God? In tithes and offerings. You're under a curse, the whole nation, because you're robbing me. Bring the whole tithe in the storehouse, the storehouse of the church. It says, watch, it says, watch, that there may be food in my house, and my house was the temple in the synagogues. Now it's the church. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there won't be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it's ripe, says the Lord Almighty. What's a tithe? It's a tenth. It's a dollar out of every ten. And yet we are fearful to do that. But let me tell you something. God makes everything last longer. He keeps, he keeps things from breaking down. He blesses you with opportunity for promotion. They call your number. Because God knows if you're on his team and you're a giver, he's going to pour through you to be a giver. He hasn't put you on this earth to be rich and be a fat cat and do everything you want sit back and take your ease there's a story in the Bible about that and he grows old and he gets ready to sit back and take his ease and he dies that day his life was required of him and his barns were full he left the earth he never enjoyed it let me tell you something the only thing you can take to heaven is what you invest ahead of time and I'm telling you when I set this church up I didn't want to see what anybody gives and in this moment right now I'm glad I have no idea if you ever have given a dime or not and it doesn't matter to me because it's between you and God but you're missing a blessing you're missing miracles you're missing being a part and obedience to God it, it affects you it affects the kingdom of God and let me tell you something ministry takes money 
but I don't ask, I don't say this because we need money. The building is paid for, we've got money in the bank, and we're gonna build, pay cash for the next, the next edition. That's not why I'm saying it. I don't talk about money much, but if you talk about membership, you ought to say if you're part of the membership or the fellowship of God, God Almighty, then God talks about it and he talks about it a lot. The next thing is holiness. You see, you represent me and I represent you. I'm a part of New Hope Assembly and the way you live is what they think we all live like. And when you go out and do things that are embarrassment, you not only embarrass the last name, your family name, but you embarrass the church name. Holiness, First Peter uh, 1, First Peter, I mean, I think it's First Peter 1, 15 to 16. I'm not sure, but it's that one up there. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in your conduct. Since it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. First, Second Corinthians 5.20, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. An ambassador is a representative as though God were making his appeal through us. If God's making his appeal through us, we ought to live where God can make the appeal that we look like somebody. Now listen, I've let God down many times like this. Have you? I've let God down many times and I'm, and I'm, and I, and I'm ashamed, ashamed. I have, but I'm doing my very best to stay as close to God so that my life reflects his love and his truth and his grace and his kindness. I'm not mean-spirited, even if I disagree. I don't care who the person is. I don't wanna be that. I want to live my life right and love right. Truth and love balance. The next one is instruction. Ephesians 4.11 says, so Christ gave apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and what? Teachers, and when I started this church, missions was a big thing. We're always going to be missions oriented and we're always going to be a Sunday school, a Bible class, an education, Christian education church because you can't, this is, this will starve you what I'm doing here. I'm showing you, but I'm confronting you, but you need something more. You need to study the word and be deep in the word. You need to be in classes. You need to get here an extra hour. Don, Don Pastor Don in here, he teaches in great depth, verse by verse, right here in this sanctuary every Sunday starting about 9, 20, 25. And there's other classes the same. You need to be in a study. You need to develop studies in your home. You need to, you need to teach your own children. We need to be teachers. The Bible says in Deuteronomy to teach them to observe all that I've commanded you, the law of God. Teach your children. And then not only instruction, but finally, and I ask the musicians to come with this, prayer and praise. You see, we're not the church if there's no prayer because prayer is a communication. It's talking and listening. I mean, how many of you women really like it if your man does all the talking and never listens? How many of you like it if they do all, they just don't say anything and, and they half listen? Listen, prayer is talking to God and listening to God. He can read your mind. You can talk to him without saying it out loud and you can listen to God. He puts thoughts in your mind if you ask him to. He directs you. And we need to be a people to pray. Tonight at 5.30 right here, we're gonna have a time of prayer. It's short time. But it's not how long we pray, it's that we pray together in unity and you come together because our nation needs prayer. This world needs prayer. You need prayer, your family needs prayer, I need prayer. We need to pray one for another. We need to be people of prayer and we need to be people of praise, why? Just like Pastor Austin said, because Jesus saves. If you don't have gratitude that you were once a sinner, but now you're saved and Christ is your savior and Jesus has died for you, and he loves you and he offers you pardon, that ought to make your mouth full of praise to sing, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, we have a father. You're his children. We're brothers and sisters. We're a forever family. You're stuck with me. And I'm gonna tell you something. I posted a picture when I was younger so you can identify me in heaven. Go to my Facebook because I'm not gonna look like this. Okay, I had hair then. Some of some. Some of you did too. I hope you get hair in heaven, but I'm planning on it. <laughs> Forever family, that's it, guys. He's our father. He's a good father. 